And away we go. Pause it a little early, but welcome to Deicide. <laughs> I'm your host, Dean Machine, and I am today I'm joined by, of course, Hydra as Bart. Today also we have Scythe Man from Focus Gaming and Payne de Vion from Denial NA. So welcome and thank you guys. Uh, we're going to jump right into the last week's tournament results, which is, as you can see here, Root Gaming came in first place over on the NA side, Snipe coming in second in a 2-1 to one finals, and then Denial NA coming in third. I am actually on the webcam here. Ha! Ah, so, that's right, but that was that, and over on the EU side, we have Bipolar Method coming in first, kind of, not really out of nowhere, but uh, almost out of nowhere, I mean, it was, it's pretty much the entire Copenhagen Wolves, except for Lobster being mid instead of Spray Yarn, then SK Gaming coming in second, and Denial EU coming in third, one thing you could definitely tell about this weekend was, jungling was extremely important, extremely yeah. important, quite like, potent. If you weren't jungling, you were losing. <laughs> or if you weren't doing it right, you were losing. Opinions? Uh, I guess, Scythe, since you are mid, what were you thinking? I, I heard a lot of complaints from mid about, uh, especially from Spray Yarn, about uh, how he hates jungling. What do you think? You know, I don't mind it, really. I mean, this is coming from a guy that has been ganked constantly since I got this new computer, so I guess I'm used to it. <laughs> It's obviously the I, I really don't mind it. Like it just you have to be a little more aware of the situation. Obviously, it pays to keep really good tabs on their jungler. Um, I know I try to make Shang's life difficult every time we play against them. Uh, other than that, like I, I feel there's more stress on the solo the, the solo side lane than there is the mid lane. Yeah, I mean it's so hard to two v one in this game. At so. Least, 2v1 and keep up effectively. So why don't... I don't understand why people don't switch and make it a 1v1 lane. Like, why do you... Bart, do you know why? Or anyone as to... Like, when you have a 1v1 lane and you see, oh, my guy's going up against two, maybe we should swap lanes with him so he can be up against the one person as well. Um, <laughs> kind of like, I, you know, doing solo top and league or something. So, I think it comes down to, like... There's not a big. I guess it has. I guess it's like the two v one lane. Like both teams are thinking, like, well, we'll get our our range carry farmed mm -hmm. in a two v one lane, and if you pull off the solo lane, the the risk is worth the reward. Maybe like one of the, one of the few situations it seems like in Smite we're going for the riskier play pays off. Yeah. Um. Maybe maybe that I think is it would be generally the thinking. Hmm. Well, one thing I should say is people shouldn't try it in pub games because it's just... <laughs> you don't get a lot of communication and support. I mean, we'll get into this a little bit more later, but for now we want to start off with Bart and our questions for him. So if you have questions for Bart or you would like to, to you know, ask him things, please do. Let me make sure this is... Oh, I took off his screen region. I will add his screen region now. So hey. what questions do you gentlemen have? Uh... Payne, do you have any questions that you were thinking of? Yeah, I have a question for Bart. Actually, um, we've heard a lot of what you're doing on the stream and basically like what you're active in in the community. But I'd like to know, as a as an employee of IRES, what do you actually do? As like the what, office and stuff. What a day to day is for me. Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, well, there's there's like quite a bit of general kind of support around player interaction and, and feedback around the game and communicating that. Um, so I would say probably half of my time that's not spent streaming in the office is communicating... Wow, I'm getting feedback like crazy here. Um, <laughs> is, uh, is, is communicating the um, like bug reports and stuff that players have to, to the QA staff, um, doing play testing, talking about balance, having conversations with designers about changes or gods or you know, writing emails or to that kind of point. So there's, there's definitely, that's about probably half of what I do that's not streaming. The other half is, uh, is mostly kind of relations with esports entities and organizations. So I'm, I do a lot of like evaluating of different third party matchmakers and tournament providers and, um, kind of setting up and maintaining 
the smaller kind of so like we do lots of regional tournaments that probably don't get heard of about you know here like the Polish guys ran a tournament last weekend and there's Brazilian tournaments so there's there's some of that as well and that that's that makes up a majority of my time. Hmm. All right, and also I had another question uh, which is more like overall for the game um, for in League of Legends. Han and Dota, I think, especially in League of Legends, actually, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff put into the lore of the game. Like right now, let's say you wonder who like Rabbit and is in, in League of Legends, you can read a bit about it and you'll know like a, a little bit about it. What about like Toadie? Who's Toadie? And like, like where does the Gem of Isolation comes from? And like, is there at some point going to be anything about that? That's just a personal question, to be honest. Yeah, I think I think that's. Um something that probably more of a release kind of thing. Like, like once we're we're still kind of in the stages of like, let's make gods and let's make items. Um, Dota doesn't have that so much in terms of specifically the items. Um, the gods or the, the heroes do to an extent. Han doesn't really have it either. Han doesn't explain why, you know, the puzzle box is the puzzle box. Like, <laughs> why does that spawn minions? You know, same thing in Dota. They're not like, yeah, the Necronomicon spawns minions because it's the Necronomicon. Um, a league, I, I, I don't know. I guess they do that. I know league has a lot more around lore between the. I mean, they do like the comic book series thing and like and all these kind of like summoners fighting each other in fictional towns. Or I've seen like one of them one time. I thought it was pretty neat. Um, I think yeah, that that's like that kind of fleshing out the game world is something that we're interested in um, more as as a function of the full released game. Okay, cool. So I have a question of. What do the guys over at Hi-Rez think of the new jungle item and how it's affected the game? If you guys like, is it kind of what you anticipated, or is it like, wow, this is really different than what we were expecting to happen? Uh, no. Did you have an expectation? That's... Is I guess the other question. I think the expectation was that well, so there was a general feel from the community that um, the competitive community, of course. I mean, that's that's. To kind of go back to your original question, uh, kind of a, a lot of what I do, summing up those kind of interactions, is I, I'm a, I'm kind of the voice for the competitive community in design meetings, I guess. So like I'm the I'm the player advocate around that kind of thing. So hmm. I was advocating on behalf of the players that there be the competitive players that there's more options for how you put a, a team together. That that I heard a lot of feedback and a lot of stuff from. You know, kind of many people across the different scenes around. Hey, it's really frustrating for us that it's tank carry, tank carry. You know, aggressive mid lane mage, um, and that that you can kind of make these these niche picks in the mid if you want to, but they're risky and what you know that kind of piece of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I expressed that concern, and the the design response was, okay, well we have a pretty good idea of what we want to do. Like, I have a pretty good idea of how we can make jungling viable. You just make an item that gives more experience if you jungle. Right? Like, that was that was kind of, I think, the yeah the thought process there. Like, it wasn't necessarily, like, this is going to be perfect on the first implementation. And that's actually why you saw Bumba's Mask still in, or still eligible for tournament play, even though it was it was known to be bugged, was that it was, it was more important to get feedback on the item, and, and because we iterate so quickly that it was, like I said, it was more important to get feedback on the item than to, like, necessarily have it not be bugged in the tournament, which, of course, is not advantageous. So you definitely don't want that. You don't want bugged stuff in, in competition. Of course. But at the end of the day, like, we pay for the cash prize. We pay yeah. for all of the tournament, and this is really valuable to us. Yeah. It's a good investment, even though it kind of sucks. I mean... Uh, I would say the way I look at it with high res paying for the, the tournament stuff is that you guys are investing in a good stream and good statistics based on the competitive scene. Do well, yeah, but more than that, we're and... investing, I think we think about it more than that is investing into the players. Like, like realistically, like the CEO of the company, Erez, is really, really passionate about competition play and Smite, uh, esports as a thing and streaming and, and wants to make it such that, you know, that the players he can, can afford to make to it a full players. time. Like, yeah, the players can afford to be that good at the game, and and that it's important that we reach down and and give back to those players that want to play our game at a competitive level. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna say like, yeah, we're gonna host tournaments, we want it to be worth your time, and we want we want the teams to be able to get a piece of it. Cool, cool. All right. Well, we have another question here. Uh, I've seen on the Reddit, Twitch, about, or and such about making the solo lane the closest lane to the Gold Fury. 
Mm. Opinions. Making the solo lane the closest lane to the Gold Fury? Yeah. I don't even understand what that means. Like, uh, instead of having the two-on-one, two-on-one, it's, you know, one-on-one -on -one in the lane that is the Gold Fury side of the, of the map. So... Like, what, is there a, is the question, like, why don't teams do that? I guess, which was, I guess, kind of fall back into our first statement, which was, if you can make the 2v1 fall into your advantage, then you're going to be ahead anyway. <clears throat> kind of like what you see in League, where you have the, the well, the dragon side is actually two side, the two people side, so. Yeah. Do you mind if I take that one, Bart? No, please, please. <laughs> the, I've actually heard theories about this, and the... The, the conclusion that I think most people have come to is kind of the same thing in, in League. Is it should, if, it's, if you're going to pick a lane like that, it's going to have to be the closer one to the Fire Giant because the Fire Giant is less accessible early on. It's the same reason in League why the 2v2 is the bottom lane. It's not for any reason other than dragons are accessible earlier. Yeah, okay. you want to have the it's overload of players getting, on that side. Yeah. Early gold. You want to be able to control the gold fury. Being able to defend that early gold. Yeah. Also, I I doubt that that'll happen in this game, plainly because it makes jungle rooting, rooting um, very random. So you have to have two different routes because you can never judge which side you're going to be on before it starts. Yeah. What's interesting, I think, is is kind of it, it, that's. So, kind of tangential to that part of the conversation, which clearly drives a lot of that idea of if there was going to be a 1v1, it would be on the side of the Fire Giant for the, the reasons that we stated. But um, you would think that the buffs would factor heavily, heavy, more heavily into it, like because of the way the map is mirrored, like your solo laner potentially would be, with blue buff, will be going against their solo laner with speed and cooldown reduction. Yeah. Um, That's the other thing I was thinking of. But the junglers taking those buffs primarily, and I don't s like my feelings on Bumba's mask. Like the whole like, if you don't get the last hit, you get more experience. Piece of it is kind of moot because you still get 110 percent of the experience. Like it's still good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like it's not like you get 90 percent. You get 110, not 125. So I don't mm -hmm. see a lot of situations where you're gonna have, you know, your side laner rotating over to take the last hit so that you can get 15 percent additional experience as the jungler. I just don't see that being a thing. Hmm. Maybe okay. maybe I'll be maybe I'm wrong. I mean you guys are, you know, the competitive players, but Might be the way I it. see it it's just like you just with nothing's really gonna change. It's just not quite as fast. Yeah. And you're a little bit better off if someone KSs you at level one against the red. I mean the way I read it was kind of a change to make the jungle roll less of a, I farmed for 15 minutes, I'm level 20, and have 3,000 gold on everybody, and more of a, I'm here to support, gank, roam, and... Stay leveled. Overall, get my team ahead. Yeah. I mean, that's just how it read off to me, but what do I know? <laughs> yeah. I'm a rock. I see, I see Pawn in chat saying, you know, basically, if, if the difference makes, it makes a difference between you being level 4 or level 5 with a full clear... Um, that it could, you know, that you're going to want to hit level 5 when you clear your side of the jungle. Yesterday when I tested it, I think I got to level like 4 and 3 quarters by, by full clearing with Bumbas. I think. I know I hit level 3 at about 2 minutes 20 seconds instead of sub 2 minutes. Where you were hitting level 4 with Arachne at 2 minutes, I believe. Hmm. Pretty consistently. Uh, triple egging, both can or triple egg, double egg, take blue, take red, gank mid. Was getting you to like level 6 at 3, I think. Um, Did you say um, triple leg? It got you to three on the camps alone, and then if you got a kill, I think it got you to four. Yeah, yeah. You put three three eggs on the XP camp on the right side, two eggs on the XP camp on the left side, auto-attack that once, take blue with your left laner that's handed it already for you, then take red, and then if you get a gank on mid lane, it puts you, I think, at level six at like two and a half minutes. Like, it was like crazy. <laughs> well, I know, even if you... Even if you sh were sharing experience with two people at red and one person at blue, if you'd egg the gold camp, it got you one minion away from three. Hmm. Hmm. So, so there you go. Like, I wonder if it's going to be... There'll be min-max opportunities for you to like not get the last hit on the blue camp, give it to your solo laner, and that gives you enough experience to hit level five when you full clear. I mean, you may see something like that. And then it gives your solo laner some extra experience, too. <clears throat> That's right. 
Hmm. Hmm. I have a question for Bart. Actually, considering the jungle, I want to know: Is it ever like going to be a possibility of increasing the jungle size, and not especially like not especially the item? Is it a possibility? Yeah, as in, like, has it been yeah. considered? Is it going to be tasks? I mean, we're still in beta. From... That's a possibility. That's about as much as I can say about it. Okay. Without confirming or denying whether or not. But, I mean, we've changed the map before. There's nothing saying that we're not going to do it again. But will it be specifically to make the jungling more viable or larger? <sighs> Maybe. But, I mean, there's a lot of factors that we're considering that that's not the least of them. Things mm -hmm. like... The map maybe if we're gonna if we're gonna make a map change maybe it should be more friendly to ganking maybe there should be less line of sight in certain corridors maybe there should be more in other corridors maybe we want to incentivize this versus that maybe we want the jungling to be difficult and not you know so I I wouldn't say that if there is a map change it will be specifically to address jungle viability. Hmm. I have a question for you. What's the uh? consensus in the office about the influx of global alts that we're putting into the game at this point? Um, it's kind of like a little bit of a joke because all those gods are actually <laughs> were made by one of the one designer. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, now it's like kind of a joke. Like he was just like, you know, like, oh, well, you know, we're like, you know, you know, the next gods he's working on. He's like, yeah, well, Bill's going to have a global ultimate and Bob's going to have a global ultimate. They're both going to have dashes. They're also going to have lifesteal. Like, so, like, the same guy made Neath that made Athena that made Apollo. Apollo. Those are all the same designer. Somehow that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> kind of get a, a feel for... There was a little bit of... I think we've we've kind of, like... There was a little bit of maybe, like, too much going on there. With, especially Neath and Apollo, I feel. It, personally, I feel that way. That, like, Neath doesn't really need attack speed slow on her AoE lifesteal nuke. Like, <laughs> why does she need better viability against carries with an AoE root? And then, like, Apollo, like, why does he get a run speed and a slow at the end of his dash? Like, it's not, like, it's just there. Like, you don't why really need that. I, I know well, some feedback I was thinking of earlier. that Well, originally he was he was originally configured to have protections on his mez. That was the original design, and then it got taken out right before he was released, and then he got released really, really weak, uh, according to, like, the stats and according to how he was being played and, and how he was at all levels of play, and it was added back on. Um, now, you can I mean, definitely, I, I, definitely make sorry. the assertion that that's too much, but that was that's the process there. I don't, I don't mind the protection so much as I mind the numbers on them. That's right, right. That's kind of the point, is that I think you can make a, a, a case for 50 is too much, but he kind of was just getting dunked before he had that really hard. It was really hard for him to do much. Um, after he blew his spells, you're auto-attacking, and you're just taking so much damage. But like when you compare that to something like an Anubis, and it's like, why doesn't Anubis get 75 protections when he's using Plague of Locust? Like, he dies. Like, fun story about Anubis. Anubis playing a Locust is the only channeled ability in the game that isn't either CC immune or knockback immune. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, my question was, uh, or kind of comment or observation was, it seems as though a lot of the abilities and things coming out are, if they're not overly complicated, they're kind of getting overly complicated. Like, reading Bumba's Mask today in the game to see what the changes were no, was like, holy sh... That text is really small and it's giant. <laughs> Bumba's mask is basically like we, the joke around the office is the tooltip should just be like it makes your jungle better. Don't buy two. <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, yeah, a good that's, one. That's I mean, that's basically the tooltip, right? I mean, <laughs> and so yeah, it's like you know some of these different gods with how their kits work, where it's like, well, if you do this with this and then that, and, like you know the Bacchus problem, where you gotta you know you know too, he has too many things that are. People don't quite understand how it works. Well, there's a difference between high concept and too much going on, I think. Like, Bacchus is just high concept. Mm -hmm. He really doesn't have that much going on. His most convoluted ability is number three because it causes a healing debuff and has a conditional stun. Right? I mean, like, that's that's a lot going on in one ability. Yeah. Um, but, like, I think it, you can kind of... It kind of... This, uh, this complexity started with Shibalanke. Yeah. <laughs> With the like, oh well, his if you use his two before his three, it sets up this like burst condition, 
oh, that's really cool. Like, what if we did more of that kind of stuff? And then it was like, well, then let's do Neath, where she drops the weaves that are uncounterable wards that can explode and do an AoE damage, and then she can lifesteal, but also she should attack speed slow because she gets crushed by on her, and oh, but her late-game damage won't be that good, but she'll have a global, you know, like... Yeah, it's like, you, of, it's like you're kind of doing a little bit of a fix here for this here, and now it's starting to make everything extra complicated. Yeah. On top of what it needs to be. So some other questions. Uh, so, Pig Thief asks the the typical daily question of what do you think you need to be changed? What needs to be changed on Anubis, if you could? Um. So I actually like thought about this just recently about what I would like to see changed on Anubis. I play Anubis fairly often. I think he's a lot of fun. I really like. I think so. Originally, Anubis was a mid laner. Like, mm -hmm. pure mage mid laner was his, like, original kit design. Now, as more and more gods came into the game that were just so much better than him at doing that, and not reliant on very small skill shots to do damage, he really fell way off in terms of his viability. Mm -hmm. And now he's more of an assassin. Like, he plays like an assassin. He's, he plays like a magic assassin. Like, you blink in, you stun something, if it hits, they're dead. If yep. you have an advantage. It it plays like it plays like Blink Lena and Dota basically, like or a, or a Fedla Shrak or anything like that. I mean, so things I would like to see for Anubis personally would be his passive made much stronger, um, Plague of Locust being immune to knockback, and front loading the damage on Plague of Locust more. So what, what do you mean front loading exactly? Like basically like either that the first tick is stronger. Or uh, applies okay. a dot, or it comes out in waves, so that because here's the issue with Anubis, at level one he's on he's at basically parity with the other mages. At level two he's in a lot of trouble. From two to five, you're in some serious trouble with Anubis. Like Poseidon, Agni, Alquang, Hell, all of them, you have to use Plague of Locust to stop their push at some point. And if you pick the wrong, like you got to pick it, you got to pick your point to start channeling Plague of Locust and get some damage out, or they push right through you and, and take and you take too much tower damage and you lose too much experience. And you got to solve that problem for him to make him more viable. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he needs to have mobility personally. Like I know that that's gonna that's gonna be the like, yeah, that's the like. Oh, I sit in my you know sorry pain, but I sit in my basement and I think about you know how smite should be. Oh well, clearly the problem is that Anubis doesn't have full mobility while he's channeling Plague of Locust, and maybe the damage should just come down. But like that's that's. That's just kind of broken. getting at what we were talking about before, where it's like, why does he need that? Why can't he just be the guy that does crazy damage and just races you all the time? And that's what I would like to see. I'd like to see him, instead of it being like, oh, let's make him like more viable and make him have escapes, Like, I'd like to see him just become even more all-in. Hmm. Or it's just like, he's gaining... like So his passive is that he gains... He steals your protections. I would like to see that be much more aggressive. Yeah. And then maybe do some kind of treatment with him, specifically around magical lifesteal. To where he doesn't take the 33% or the 66% penalty on life seal from an AOE ability, like maybe something like if they're mummified, the next ability that you hit with, or if you hit a if you hit a mummify, you get a stack, and then the next ability you cast gets 100% contribution uh. of life seal, like and you're stealing a lot more protection, so that because Anubis, when you get to about level 10, 11, 12, 13 in that area, and you have a small advantage. You can set up situations where you mummify into Grasping Hands, tick them down some, and then your next mummify, you can Grasping Hands play a Locust, and they're taking so much damage that they have to make the choice to blow Beads or Sprint or Aegis to deal with that damage. And then the next time you mummify, you can set up a, a kill with your ult. So you got to make that... I feel like for the newest, you got to make that process easier to set up, where you're setting up situations where they have to make tough decisions with blowing big cooldowns to deal with the damage you're putting out. They can't just be like, oh, I'm playing Poseidon, I'm just going to drop a Whirlpool under him while he's playing a Locust thing and laugh. <laughs> or just knock him back and knock him out of it. Yeah. You know, he, Anubis basically just doesn't have any good matchups. Anubis is good against Anubis and Alquang and Zeus. And even Zeus is dubious now. Yeah. And he's not even that... And, and Alquang cannot push him. Like, you have to win... You have to make some plays in the first three levels as Anubis against Zeus or against Alquang to like stay in it effectively. And you beat Zeus, but I don't know now with all the run speed and slow immunity that he has, it's gonna be tough to lock him down. But like if you play Anubis against like Isis, whew, you're in some trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that mobility. I, 
I see where you're going with that part, but I, I gotta kind of disagree that you like you say you want to make them more all in, but the problem is especially with everything that's coming into the game now, you don't get all in opportunities anymore. You're either going to be ganked or global ulted, and now you have a worthless pick. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, I think that not everybody can be. Not everyone's top tier. Yeah. That's kind of I mean, the problem. I, I love Anubis. Anubis is fun, but I like to see him at least be semi viable. I mean, I have more worshippers on Anubis than I have on Poseidon right now. Like, I love how bad you are. But, yeah, shut up, you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't disagree with you that he may never be viable in top tier play. Probably not. Like, he's an assassin at the end of the day. And right now in the meta, it doesn't really support mid lane mage assassins very well. Like, that's why you saw side lane Hebo. But Anubis True. is too re reliant on wraps to set up a side laner. Yeah. So. I mean, I have I have an idea for a change to him that I don't think pushes him over the edge, but then again, I'm not a designer. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see really only his Plague of Locust change, and I'd like it to work similar to uh, Vulcan Backfire, where he... First of all, it changes from this large time span channel thing to kind of a mini nuke with a mm -hmm. short knock self knockback, and then maybe it applies a dot after maybe. So it's That's... like you can you can go in wrap, do your usual combo, and maybe cut it short to kind of secure your safety. We were talking about things like that. So like thought about like doing like a kind of like slow moving. Plague of Locust wave sort of thing that like goes through the creeps. You kind of just fire it off. But we felt like you know, <clears throat> and, and by we I mean like me and my buddy that works at the office. This isn't like the lead designer or anything where it's like these are the changes going to be made. But when we were kind of talking about it, it seemed like you want to preserve the like I hit you with my wrap and I dump everything I got feel of Anubis. That's really his like main feel. You don't want to get rid of that. That's not that, that's his design, and and that's not something that you want to. I I know what you're saying, like, and I agree with you in principle that if he doesn't have a movement based ability or significant crowd control ability or whatever it's going to take, he's going to probably not ever be top tier. What about maybe giving him a bonus move speed on mummy wrap throwing? Nah, I thought about that too. Like, what if his passive was inclusive of when you tick that you got run speed against targets or mummified that kind of thing. But, like, why does every mage need to be able to escape? Because every other mage can escape. <laughs> but maybe that just speaks to the... Maybe that just means that the other mages are overpowered. Oh, I think oh. we can make that argument all day. <laughs> right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, does every mage have to have movement? Can you not balance it based on damage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Anubis doesn't do any damage now either. Yeah. And even if you even if he really did, you can still shut that down with Neethalt or a gank of any sort. Neethalt really complicates. I mean, Neethalt really makes these gods that have no escape non-viable. That's really what it comes down to. That's why, like, Alquang is like, come on, really? They're just going to, like, if you don't ban Neeth and you pick Alquang, he's dead over and over and over again. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really been my pet peeve this week is the global ults and whatnot, like, I don't understand why all these ults that auto-lock have to have a range that covers the entire map. Like, why can't they have Thor ult ranges? Like, why can't Apollo's uh, mana cost scale up with time that he's in the air so that he's not landing from base with still a quarter, uh, with still 75% of his mana. Mm. Oh, we're going down that road. Why is it, why is Apollo doing 700 burst damage at base with his abilities? <laughs> well, since you went there, why do most <laughs> ADs do more burst damage with their abilities than some mages? Like, it's ridiculous. Really, I mean, but if we're talking about some mages, we're talking about... Alquang and Anubis. We're back to Anubis. <laughs> I mean, uh, no one's out damaging Agni, and really, no one's out damaging Anubis. It's just hard to do the damage. Like, yeah. Plague of Locust is the single highest damaging ability in the game, besides that's not an ultimate. And Anubis is ultimate, highest damaging ultimate in the game. Hmm. So I think it's erroneous to say Anubis isn't doing damage. Yeah, it's just See, hard. It's just it's, hard it's, to actually get that damage. It's to definitely hit. more accurate to say he can't 
do damage. It's not that's that he's right. not doing it. It's that he's no way to without getting murdered. Hmm. But speaking of uh, Anubis, on his three grasping hands, I always wondered if ants are pulling you towards the ground, why are you not crippled or something? That's something else we we were talking about. It's like, but is that too much? Like, I mean, we're kind of there's a lot. This is a very complex change for Anubis. I feel like because yeah. Anubis, I I feel like even though he's like pretty far removed from a high tier pick right now. If you do something like just he can move during Plague of Locust, he's oh, yeah. gonna just dunk everything. Like it's yeah. gonna be so hard to deal with him. Gem of Isolation, he's moving faster than you. He's channeling you. He's hitting you for 390 damage a tick eight times over four seconds. Like, what are you gonna do? Yeah. So why did you guys buff Hebo's passive by 15% instead of increasing the range of his one by 20 or 30%? He's an assassin. Fair enough. Like um, he, he, that's his that's his thing. It's like he, if he gets in close, his water hands hurt, but he's very squishy. Not like he has more utility with water hands. That was that was the spirit of the change. Crap! There was something I wanted to ask about. What Payne was asking, I forgot what it was. Crap. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder what Pompon's video is. I'll check I'm it out sure. later. Don't I, I can guarantee you without even looking at it, it's extra credits. Yep. Ah. Figured he was going to link that. Yep. The, is it, it the perfect and balanced one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's either it's always either that one or the apples to oranges balance one. Where it's like, you want things that are different but equal. This guy has availability, but this guy has a blank. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good show you got there. And right. it, I mean, to be fair, those those things are really they really are pretty informative and, and generally pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. I like extra credits. It's good. I like that video. So, I guess last questions for Bart before we let him go and get on to the other discussion of the day. Throw them down in the chat, or what not? Oh, I have a question. Uh, is do you know of any changes in the tournament stuff? Anytime in the near future, or is it just kind of holding steady with, uh, you know, the weekly tournaments? Any weekly tournaments, like, land events that's on the horizon that was like, yeah, well, we might be thinking about doing something soon. Nope, got nothing for you. Okay, I mean, we're always there's always stuff being planned, but there's nothing that I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna publicly drop right now. I mean, we'll be ten, we'll be attending RTX. It's I don't RTX. know if that's what you're like intimating, but we'll we'll be attending the Rooster Teeth Expo. Which is oh, uh, in Austin and July Fourth weekend. So, oh, any of you from the the Midwest or whatnot, feel free to come through. Or Dallas, I don't know if it's Austin or Dallas. I don't remember. And yeah, I think we'll be at QuakeCon. I think that's on the the schedule this year as well. So we'll, we'll be a couple. We'll be in Texas over the summer a couple times. If you guys are from that area, anyone out there watching? Hmm. Other than that, uh, is there any other plans for the Jungle Mask in the next upcoming? I guess aside from what you guys have already done. You'll know Tuesday before the patch. <laughs> like I don't know. I like. I mean, we need. We'll need the data from this change to evaluate any future changes. Okay. I. I mean, I. I have a question generally. Um. You know. Not how has the this patch affected Naja in in the eyes of our competitive panel here? I haven't played yet. There's something I don't get with it. Why buff the ultimate? Uh, to compensate for the fact that you're not gonna get a lot of damage out of it. Out of the number two anymore. Yeah, didn't she, didn't you say she lost something like sixty percent effective attack speed? At uh, it's like levels? so at at one attack speed, it has there was no difference between what is currently implemented and what was previously in live. The problem was basically that the chain animation. Was, see if I can remember this. I assume was was it was speeding. dividing it was dividing your attack speed by four, right, or whatever, however it was dividing it. But it was dividing your attack speed it was dividing the wrong attack speed basically. Like it was like dividing your attack speed before items or something like that. And then determining what your attack speed should be and then and then multiplying them by the item attack speed. Something weird like that. Where basically at high attack speeds it was more and more exacerbated. So I, I like I think at one point four you were effectively hitting at one point eight. Oh, uh, okay. So like okay. at two X attack speed, it's like forty percent slower than it was in live currently. Or previously, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean I haven't seen it yet, but 
It was definitely something that I read in the patch notes. I was like, yes, another nerf to Nasia, whether it be a bug fix or not, and <laughs> I got to have to keep my eye on it. Yeah, that one was a that was a nerf. That was a bug fix, which resulted in a nerf. And then instead of kind of just like, and we may still have to do this, but instead of just like kind of like rebuffing the number two to deal with it, it was like, ah, let's just give it a little. I mean, we've kind of always wanted that ultimate to be a little bit more gratifying. Cause yeah. It just kind of underwhelming kinda, when you take them all the way up there, and then you do all the stuff, and it's like, oh, they took a quarter damage. <laughs> yeah. So I think that, but I mean, it got buffed by ten basically at all ranks. It got buffed by twenty at level two, which, which with Deathbringers basically an additional sixty damage over the life of the ultimate. So it's not really a big massive change. change. Hmm. Todd just reminded me of another question I had, and, and maybe you can bring this up to that one designer, Bart. Why does Athena have a three swing chain and an auto attack modifier that cancels said three swing chain? Um, all auto attack modifiers cancel chains. Not just number two cancels her chain as well. Or his chain, I'm sorry. <laughs> ability firing cancels chains. Uh, are, are, yeah, ability firing cancels chains. Active item firing does not. Hmm, interesting. So, like, you can... I don't know if this is known, but, like, you can, like, with Naja, like, hit three times, activate Girdle for the fourth hit, and it doesn't interrupt. Hmm. Or, like, hit Good three enough. times, Hand of God's three, stun something, and follow it up with a fourth hit. Hmm question was, why can Ares pull Thor out of the sky with his ult? Is that true? I would no, want to see that in action. In sky, <laughs> as far as I know. Yeah, I don't think that's true. It doesn't yeah. pull him out, it just hits him while he's in the sky. It just does damage to him Yeah, it there. does damage, that's it. Yeah, that's, so it that's might right. kill him in his ult if he's that's, still taking that's damage. That's working as intended. He's okay. immune. He's, he's CC immune. He's not damage immune. He can still take dot damage. Okay. Yeah, like Nijar or any basically everybody that can go up into those random things can still take dot damage. If you kill him, it looks like you pull him down. Yeah. Says Brandon. So if he dies to the old Yeah, that makes sense. I think I believe that's working as intended. Yeah. But if he comes down and he's still alive and and your ult pulls him, then it's a problem. Hmm. Cool. Awesome. Well, Bart, I guess we'll let you go and get back to your uh your planning for your stream because you got twenty minutes to set up. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's why I went late. All right, guys. Thank you. No problem. Have a good day. Uh, anything you want to say before you leave? As he mutes himself. <laughs> What'd you do? Oh, oh I mean, I, it was my inline on the mic, this, this oh. thing here, right? Um, yeah, I'll drop my contact information in the chat if anyone wants to follow up any of this kind of stuff. And thanks to all the panelists. Thanks to you, Demon Machine. And I'll uh, see you guys all again next week. Yes, we will. Have a good day. Good, good day. See you, sir. There was a question in chat. Somebody asked, uh, can you foresee combat in the game maybe slowing down in the future? And uh, even though like Bart just left, I'll answer it real quick. You're pretty much not going to see that considering the new like gods being released with all that burst damage. And so it has always, always been about like super high and intense action. So chances are you're like never going to get that ever, ever, Alden. I'm going to disagree. How comes? Because I forget who... I'll hear it later. I'm sure Pond knows his name, but I can't remember him. Uh, there was a guy who always said that Smite would slow down and get really farmy at some point. And it's happened multiple times. Whenever we see big changes, it kind of... We go through this high action before people can deal with it. And then the general answer is usually to slow things down and just play more passive in general and have this more farmy game just to play safe and make sure that you don't really get behind in any way. Oh, um, lane-wise. Well, that was the question, wasn't it? It was just well, the it was... speed of the game. Oh, I thought it was like for like combats. No, nah, it... Yeah, can you first see combat in combat the game? In the game. Yeah. Well, that, that pertains to combat. Um, yeah, no. I... It, I... I think he more or less means that, you know, when you get into a team battle, suddenly there's a hundred ultimates going off and suddenly you're dead, effectively, for a lot of, especially for a lot of new players that aren't used to this kind of speed. Uh, it's, it's extremely fast. I think it's one of the I best things on Smite. Yes, I was considering lane combat and not team fights. Yeah, well... I think, like, in team fights, it's always going to be, like, super high burst anyway. Like, even in League of Legends or... Like team on. fights are always over in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yay, Pon Pon, he's alive! 
Oh my god, it's Pond. I know, right? I'll, I'm just fixing the screen regions again. <gasps> so, Pon Pon, how are you doing? I think you're muted. Or if you're not saying anything yet. Hello. Hey. Hey. How are you feeling? I actually can't hear anyone. That's interesting. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why can't I hear anyone? Pond, oh, there we go. There oh, we there go. We I can hear you guys. I don't know if you can hear me. You sound yeah, like you're not doing so good, but that's, uh, we want you to feel better. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Can't sleep. Don't feel good. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm I'm still waiting for my phone call from the doctor. Kind of annoying that he hasn't messaged back yet. Yeah. That is always true. So, I guess since you just joined us, uh, we'll, we'll get your opinion on what do you think of the jungle and all that good mess thus far? <laughs> Um, I think it has room in the competitive scene to be somewhat interesting if you see invades happen. Um, but I think in a lot of cases it just ends up snowballing the game one way or another way too hard. Because I think mm -hmm. the jungle has too much of a potential to snowball like crazy. And in casual, I think it completely ruins the casual game. Yeah. But even with the new uh, balance change on Boombas? I, I need to test it. Hmm. Um, I, I can't imagine that this makes too much of a difference. Well, well go ahead. Well, oh, okay. Uh, with, with, I just played a game with Demon before the show, and uh, prior to that, like, a couple of games too with the new jungle item, and it seemed like the jungler that were, like, being selfish and, like, greedy getting all the buffs and all the camps all the time actually didn't get, like, as far ahead as they used to. I don't even think they got ahead, if I'm right, Demon. I don't remember exactly, but... Uh... Oh, we played one game together, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, but, like, from what you've seen of it... Um, the, the ones before that, it was... If you don't have help with jungling... Basically, it's got to be a team effort for the jungling. If your team is helping you, and you get that initial red buff, and then your, your side lane helps you with that blue, and then you can go and clear the rest of it, you're going to do great. If you don't get help with that red and, blue, that red and blue, then you're screwed, because you're just not going to get anything. Because you're going to spend too long getting those first two, and then it's going to put you behind for everything else. Hmm. That's what I noticed. And then if you have people coming in and invading and all that good stuff, it's even worse. I don't know. I just think jungle is kind of problematic, um, also because of design of the map. They like if if you go look at like for example League of Legends with their jungle, the big strong buffs, the blue and the red, are actually quite a ways away from the lane. And that makes it so that it's not something that the laners generally get often. Mm -hmm. Mainly red, blue, the mid lane can actually get to it. But with the buffs kind of near the side lane, the side lane can just hop off in between waves, get the buff, and then come back. And so it incentivizes it as a lane farming tool, not as a jungle farming tool. So like switching, I almost feel like switching blue with switch red. Or, or, sorry. They just switch yeah. up gold camp. Switch gold, gold camp, camp should blue. be where like red is. And then red should be brought down, and then blue should be brought to the other gold camp, and then they should get rid of like speed or cooldown, or make them mini buffs with lesser effects, and make red and blue like the go-to buffs. Like they need, there needs to be some form of redesign. Yeah, you got to make the the bigger buffs a little safer to try and get instead of being so exposed and risky to the enemy just as much as your lane mates taking it. Yeah, and I also I'm partially worried that hires won't bounce around. Uh, like the, what they want is the jungle to be an option, the jungle mm -hmm. roam to be an option that you can have. I I can't imagine how difficult it'll be to balance between having some teams running two one two and other ones running with a jungle. Like that has to be a nightmare to balance properly because I feel like one will eventually will take advantage of the other. Yeah, I mean, it'll eventually all shift to jungle or all shift to not jungle. It's just yeah. what will happen in the meantime. Because, I mean, everybody will go with what is the most... This is what's going to win us the game, so we're going to do it. Honestly, I don't think it's possible to just make it an option yeah. just with how the mm -hmm. game is designed. It's somebody's going to min-max based on... And the, the only thing that really affects this in my eyes is the fact that everybody scales with item stats. Like, you see... Dota and Han, and because skills and abilities, well, obviously abilities, and to a lesser extent, 
auto attacks don't particularly scale with items as well as, you know, they do in League, Smite, pretty much any other MOBA you can think of. It it makes options easier to balance because there's not going to be some sort of weird innate min-max scaling just based on getting more farm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, as a quick note, is anyone else getting like this weird reverb? Weird reverb? Or is that just me? What? No, I'm hearing it. Is it me again? Let me see. I don't know. Air try it now. Test. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let me talk a little bit. Uh, no, it's good now. Okay. It was like it was really hard speaking because it was like one of those voice jammers where it like plays back your voice like yeah. half second off. Understandable. I guess Bart yeah. learn, learns to ignore it or something. I don't know how he. Nobody ever mentions it unless they or I don't notice it unless people tell me because I don't can't tell. But continuing on, continuing on. Um. So basically, any other opinions on the jungle? It, I mean, I. I think it's got a, it's of course only a week into it, so we're gonna have to do a lot more testing, a lot more seeing how things work. But I agree with both of you guys in the fact that either you make it a jungling or you don't. You don't make it an option. I like the idea of a jungle. Like most uh, most mobas have a jungle actually, and it makes you it makes you as a lane god or character, or whatever. It makes you have to be aware of the jungle. The jungler being able to gank your lane all the time, or like mid, even mid lane, mm-hmm. and I think it's a good thing that like to introduce this into the game. But like Paul Bun said, and like it, it was voiced already multiple times in like Reddit. Right now, the jungle is more or less working, and they still have to work on it. But I still like the idea of it. Like it's a good, thing, I think. Yeah, be good if it is balanced and working, it, but uh-huh. you got to make sure that you take into the fact that it's probably going to be. Give it a few more weeks, and then every team's going to have a jungler. If you don't, then something's wrong with your team. <laughs> yeah, I was I was a two point two k rated jungler in league, and so like I'm a huge fan of the jungle role. I love I love farming and finding good gank opportunities and finding good invade opportunities and stuff like that. I, it just right now I I don't feel like that option exists. There's like the level one invade, and then there's the level four invade at cooldown. But there's no set path because of the way the jungle works that so you can't rely on, on that. And that involves too much of a time effort on your part that if they just happen to not be there, you're done. The enemy jungler is now way ahead of you for just not doing something. And and so I feel like they need to work around like they need to work on the jungle itself, not Bumbas. Yeah. I'm I'm a fan of jungling. I think it uh it keeps the game from getting stale. Yeah. Um, obviously it's still gonna need some tweaking like Pon said, more in the in terms of the jungle itself, but you know, I'm okay with this and you know regardless of what everybody's been complaining about for the past week, I really like the idea of these two V one lanes or, you know, even one V one lanes sometimes, but you know, uh when I played Han I was it was in the middle of the tri lane meta and I was always that one guy and I never quite minded it. It's it becomes, for that person, more of a fight of how can I get experience and keep up and strategically do so as opposed to, okay, we're going to jump on this guy and he's either going to die or he's going to get away, and then in 10 seconds we'll do it again when we're off cooldown. So I'm just... I'm, I'm hoping they just kind of find a way to fix it with the jungle. And people stop really stop and think about what genre they're in before, you know. They keep saying two v one's boring, or yeah, you know, the game is there's less action in the game now, so I don't want to play. If you want door to door action shooters, are that way. <laughs> this is a MOBA stemming from you know RTS games. Yeah. And for those of you who who don't know, the S in that means strategy. <laughs> just just in case anybody was wondering. Doctor. Nope, that's an alarm. Oh. Oh, we were hoping they would tell you what you what was wrong yeah. with you and that you're here. Take this pill and you'll be great. They they called me yesterday saying oh they got the blood test. They were like, 
we still don't know what's wrong with you. We've ordered more tests, and I'm oh, like, oh god, Thanks. that's horrible. Yeah, that's terrible. <sighs> um, <clears throat> I guess like the jungle topic is mostly the most dominant topic of the everything now because I mean it is a massive change to the everybody's game. Everybody notices it. Everybody sees what's going on. It's not like a new god sometimes where it's like, well, they're playing him, but it's still two one two, and I can just deal with it. <laughs> this new god. Um. I do want to bring up a point uh, that Scytheman had said, which was um, the, the S in it is for strategy, and what's and then you guys are in it for the strategy. I, I, I feel like there's still a lot of room for strategy, even without a jungle role, and without the 2v1. Um, I, I think the current the way the game's been played, there was a lot of strategy, and like, like the meta was actually pretty deep. There was a lot to know. Um, so I, I don't think necessarily two, like people complain about 2v1 or the jungle role means that they're not in it for the strategy. I, I, it, the, I think the bigger problem right now is this: the jungle doesn't work right now, and so it feels bad, and I'm not sure if people articulate it the best way, and so they might just cry out 2v1 is boring, mm. when like the other pro the problem might actually be the jungle was designed around not having a jungle role. We had the PBE for that. And literally, they said we're not having a jungle roll, and they designed the new jungle around not having a jungle roll. Yeah. And they added an item, Bumba's, thinking that that would add the jungle roll. And why it did, it's not. A, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of strategy yet around it because the jungle doesn't allow for that much. So, would you prefer that they go back to the old map, outside lanes? Oh, oh, geez, that's a whole nother can of worms. Ooh. I have no idea. <laughs> That's that's that, not gonna fix it. <laughs> that that's not gonna fix it, but I do miss the level two red fights. Yeah. Those are fun. I'm yeah. I miss the loop around invade. <laughs> hmm. Actually, um <laughs> there's a difference between the other MOBAs and this one, and that in League of Legends, if you're in a two V one lane, as an example, let's say you're top lane and the enemy team swaps their lane or whatever, like doesn't matter. Two V one situation. If you zone if you try to zone the enemy uh solo laner you can still be in a range for experience, but he's not going to get gold for it. While in Smite, if you're in a range for experience, you also get gold for it. You don't have to last it to get gold. So you have to consider that also in a 2v1 lane. Like, if you try to zone somebody when, while there's an enemy jungler and you're not like fully experienced in what you're doing, and you actually do zone the guy, well, like I've seen it like as myself as a jungler, and I'm not a jungler, trying to like get ganks in lane from people that are not experienced in that. They're just like never gonna see it coming because they try to zone and they push like the enemy solo laner super far, but then they put themselves in such a super hard spot where they can they cannot really defend themselves unless they have like four wards covering the whole map for them to, mm. to like defend themselves. And like, that's really <clears throat> something you have to consider. Like it works in League of Legends if you zone two v one a guy, but in Smite if you don't zone properly, you do not negate the goal income for the guy. And if you zone properly. You can put yourself in a really like hot spot for a jungler to gank all the time. Well, it's not the same like other MOBAs, so like that's also a thing to consider in the whole like jungle discussion. Yeah. Well, if you if you compare it to League of Legends in the solo lane, you have you have train like for example, they swap two v one top lane. As a top lane, you have a bush that you can unless you're if, if you're blue side top lane, you're kind of screwed. If you're purple side top lane, you're fine. Because you have the bush close to you, you have that little wall that you can hide behind, and you can actually get in range. In Smite, the side lanes are really long. It's not that hard to zone out people, and I mean, it, it might it might be bad if you improperly do it, but assuming competitive play, assuming proper play, it's pretty easy to just completely zone out a guy. Like it, it, and like the only time you ever have to worry about when it finally does push is you push hard for one wave, and then it resets. And so, and so, like in league, you can get experience, and like you might be denied gold, but you can get experience. In Smite, I feel like you could zone them out and keep them at level one to two for a long time, and that makes it dangerous for a jungler to gank unless they're hyper over leveled. Hmm. Which means a successful gank on mid happened. Mm -hmm. I guess then it'll come down to like the new items of like Boomba, basically, because like I, mm -hmm. I like you said yourself, you didn't test it yet, but like we'll see soon. Like the overall. Mm -hmm discussion about it is going to be changed, I guess. I'm mostly yeah. playing devil's advocate here. <laughs> best kind. I'm sick and I'm pissy. <laughs> <laughs> the best kind of advocate. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. Yeah, new meta equals zoning meta. 
So yeah, that, meta game that was my concern: is that it turned into a zoning meta, which can lead to a very boring two v one. And and uh, Anatoly showed an interesting Guan Yu where he is playing like really aggressive, but I expect if that matchup were to happen again, Anatoly wouldn't get away with it again. Mm -hmm. People know what's coming. Yeah. When since you bring that up, I think. Um... What I saw last week, Allied had a really good strategy for dealing with it, and uh, I'm just going to sell him out real quick. <laughs> uh, the game he played against us with his Odin, he kind of forced the enemy team to deal damage to his minions in order to zone him in the first place, making it easier for him to get experience, um, to put it as simply as possible. And I'm not sure, I'm not saying that's going to be possible on every god or against every matchup. But it is a really good uh, way to kind of secure yourself some experience early on. How did yeah. how did he do that he, exactly? What he was doing is he had uh, Odin and he was standing in the back wave of minions. So Odin's naturally kind of tanky, mm -hmm. and with Vanguard and a bunch of potions, he in order to zone him, essentially you have to Push. deal yeah you have to deal damage to that back wave, which will push it quicker. So, yeah, he's going to take a lot of early chunk, but the minion wave is actually going to hit his tower much quicker. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, the other way you can do that is uh, and another way that you can do this, and Odin's especially good at doing this, um, Guan is as well, is you walk forward, and they have to they zone you, right? Well, they have to walk into your minion wave first, and they have to hit you to threaten you out. And the act of them hitting you turns the minions on them, which means their minions aren't getting hit, why their minions are attacking your minions. Yeah. And so the wave will push that way as well. So so there's ways you can get the wave to push. I'm just wondering how long people will let that happen. <clears throat> what will they do to... They'll just stop hitting the period? Uh, they'll run past the minions and then force... Uh, they'll f they, won't for they won't let you get into the minion wave in the first place. Because the, the second you've lost the lane is the second the guy got into the minion wave to to like allow the wave to push. Uh, and so you just so like you just zone him out from ever getting that close if possible. So and, what you... and there's characters that could do that, like Sobek or Ymir can just kinda of stand back and be like, I'm here now. Yeah, like I was playing the last game I was playing a two on one or I was one I was playing Guan against a Sobek on her. And they were just standing I mean I I tried to stand behind the minions to let, you know, Sobek uh have to pull a minion before he could pull me, but he just walks into my minions and just standing there looking at me and I'm like, well do I stand here and let him throw me into his minions or do I back up a little bit? And that was the that's the question. What should I do in that particular situation? With a Sobek. Yeah, Sobek is just super strong overall, like because of his ball. True. Yeah, Sobek right now is is uh, that's a hard lane to fight against two V one anyway, is just Sobek. If you ban Sobek there's a lot. It's a lot less scary in the solo lane. Hmm. Plus, they have Hercules. Is Hercules as bad as Sobek in that solo lane? No. Because he's got to get a lot closer. He has to get a lot closer, and um, he's not as threatening as Sobek. Because Sobek, like Sobek, has a longer range dash into the stun, mm -hmm. and then the further knockback. And why Hercules has the same thing? It's a lot shorter of a distance. So you probably jump dash or whatever out of it to be back in the safe territory reasonably. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up here because it is now our time to go on and do other things. But I do want to make a small, big, small announcement. Uh, we are going to have our casually competitive is returning. Oh, that's cool. Yay. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be running it on Saturday because that's the only day I have free because I'm running a tournament Sunday. So... We're going to do a double-pronged attack here. We have the tournament on Sunday, or Saturday, sorry, used to the old one. Uh, tournament on Saturday, and that's going to seed us into our two-week league. Because we're going to do a super short league where we just kind of basically put people in the little divisions. And then they play like one or two games a week, still working out some of the details. And then at the end of the two weeks, we'll have another Sunday bracket, or Saturday bracket, tournament. Um, I'm, actually, we're quite talking right now about doing the EU casual on Saturday and the NA casual on Sunday, so it's opposite of the uh, pro time, so that way if you guys, it's more of going to be amateur, not straight up casual, so there's no like level cap, so if like Root wants to play, they can, but they can, because that's just too irritating oh, to deal with. 
Yeah, but when it comes to like the league thing, I'm gonna try and see. We're gonna make divisions based on like this is the gold division, silver, bronze, you know that kind of thing. To where we don't have people in the league playing up against Root twice a week or something like that. So yeah. we want to try and keep them separate as much as we can. Maybe we might just break it up into two totally different things. Who knows? We'll see what the kind of participation is like. So you know, uh, it'll be held over on Denial. Uh, denialesports.com and uh, just stay tuned. They'll be posted about it soon, exactly what we're going to be doing and uh, look forward to everybody participating because it's always so much fun. So if you are casters, um, teams, whatever, just uh, please message me in some fashion that you would like to help out or participate because we're, we want to try and get uh, games casted every day. So it's going to be a great opportunity for all sorts of casters that want to do, they want to get into casting. You want to start casting. There's games every day you can try and cast now that'll be kind of official. <laughs> Official, as like people like to pick on me about. So that's all for me. Um, Scythe, do you have anything you would like to say before you go? Um, before we go? Not particularly. I'll probably wind up dropping all of my team's streams in the chat. Cool. As soon as I'm, you know, stop being lazy and type them out. <laughs> Good luck. Payne, do you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, like Mesmer Mesmeret is already posted in the the chat. If you want to check out about denial or what happened to BLG, which is now denial, go to the website. Uh, if not, well, hopefully you'll see us in the tournament. Not this weekend because unfortunately the NA is gonna have to either sub three guys or skip the tournament or go to the U scene. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Pon Pon, do you have anything you'd like to say other than we we all wish you to feel better? <laughs> I hope I feel better soon. Uh, I don't really have anything like announcement wise or anything. Uh, are you, are you on a team anymore? Are you? What do you do? Mm, no, I I have I have offers, and I was supposed to like decide this week because I was gonna scrim with a few teams, mm -hmm. and I'm deadly ill, and I can't scrim with a few teams. <laughs> so I don't know. It's just gonna have to. We'll wait. see. Okay. We'll cool. just have to wait. But uh, I, I can't think of really any announcements. Uh, thanks for bringing the casually competitive back. I always kind of like that idea. Yeah, it's uh, basically I've been trying to work with. Uh, we're trying to get team registration and stuff like that set up so that way we won't have to do it twice. And so uh -huh. now that we seem to have that, we should have that up and ready for this weekend, and it'll be uh, it'll be exciting because we love uh -huh. community. So thank you all oh, for joining I'll post, us. I'll post my stream and Twitter stuff. Awesome. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you guys next week at two o'clock, like we did this past. Or past week. Thank you all. Your beeps. DSI.